Hey guys. So I wanted to talk to you today about the Taylor remainder theorem. And so this is sort of a continuation of the Taylor polynomials that we started in the previous video. So let's recall what we were doing then. So Taylor polynomials are approximations to functions. around the center, x is equal to a. Approximations to functions around the center, x is equal to a. And because they are approximations, they must have error. And so the Taylor remainder theorem gives me a bound on that error, just as we did with the alternating series. So here, took the liberty of writing this down beforehand because it's a lot of writing. But the Taylor remainder is stating the following. We let n be a fixed positive integer. And so n is the degree of my Taylor polynomial. And then I let there be a number, positive number m, such that it bounds my n plus 1 derivative of the function f at c for all c between a and x inclusive. So I have this interval that's between a and x, or x and a, depending on which one is greater. And in that interval, I will have an n plus 1 derivative, and I just need to find the maximum value of that derivative, or the minimum value, right? So we have our absolute values here going on, and my derivative is bounded by this capital M, which is a constant then the error in my nth Taylor polynomial is given by the absolute difference between the function, the actual function, and the approximation like we talked about last time. And this is a, a function of x, which is kind of weird. But there is an inequality, and the error is bounded by that constant m multiplied by the absolute distance between the point of evaluation x and a, the center of approximation, all to the n plus 1th power, and all over n plus 1 factorial, right? So we have a couple of dependencies here. We have a dependency on x, we have a dependency on n, and it's all um, it's all pretty confusing, but similar to the alternating series, this is the first term in a, in our polynomial that we're throwing out because our Taylor polynomial goes up to order or to uh, polynomial of the form x to the n, right? And so the next term that I'm throwing out is n plus one term, um, and this this is this term that we're throwing out. This error is also known as the remainder. So you will see that interchangeably. Um, and let's state a couple of these things before we get too crazy here. So n is the degree of the Taylor polynomial. So that's pretty cool. And error is bounded by the next term in the polynomial that we throw out. You can also think about truncating the Taylor series and the first term that we throw out, that is going to be the bound on my error. There is a heuristic understanding to this because as I increase the order of my polynomial, the denominator n plus 1 factorial is going to grow, causing the, the magnitude of these, um, of these fractions to decrease as n is increasing. So the maximum magnitude that I can have out of all the terms that I'm throwing out is the, the first term that I'm throwing out, or the n plus 1th derivative. And so whenever we're working with the error, for the Taylor polynomials, we want to do the following. We want to state x, the point of approximation, a, the center, and n, the degree of our polynomial. We also want to state the interval 
which will be a to x if a is less than x or x to a if a is greater than x and that helps me determine this next step which is the maximum value of the n, n plus one derivative we actually want to find the functional form of it the function of the n plus one derivative and i want to state whether it's increasing or decreasing it could be a little bit of both and that's okay We have different ways of determining extrema of my functions by way of another derivative. But in general, um, we'll be in the easy category of my derivative is just increasing or just decreasing, increasing or decreasing. And then from that, we find the bound on my n plus one derivative. And finally, we put all of these variables together and I state the error because going back to my inequality, I already know what x is, I know what a is, I know what n plus one is, and I, I found my constant m that is bound on the n plus one derivative, so I'm good to go with, the, with inequality and I can bound my error. So with that in mind, let's talk a little bit about how to make my error smaller, right? Because that is the purpose of most approximations. We can't quite use them if the error is too big. So what does the error depend on? It depends on a couple of things. It depends on the distance from the center or the distance between the point of evaluation and the center. So that is x minus a, the absolute value of that. It also depends on n, which is the degree of my Taylor polynomial. So this gives me a strategy for manipulating the error so that I can have a small error. And the smallest error will come from me having a small interval or a small difference between x and a, so I'm close enough to the center. And the reason for that is because if my x minus a is small, my numerator is small, which makes my fraction smaller. Another way I can have a small error is to have a large n a large degree of Taylor polynomial. And when that happens, my n plus one factorial in the bottom is going to be larger, making my whole error smaller. So this is a pretty handy way of evaluating error. Now let's do an example. So this one, it's a lot to write. It's a big statement, so that's why that's why I took the liberty of writing it again. It's not focusing that well. Come on. Come on, you can do it. Eh, okay. So what is the error generated by a third degree Taylor polynomial for a function that is sine centered at a is equal to zero that is used to estimate sine of 0 0.1? So that's a lot of information. I just have to put all of these bits and pieces together. So we found um, the Taylor series or a bunch of different Taylor polynomials for sine in the previous class so we can just recall that. So we recall that the third Taylor polynomial for sine is x minus x cubed over 6. We remember that because sine is a is an odd function, it only has odd odd polynomials inside of the inside of the series. I'm trying to adjust my light to see if that changes anything. Mm, mm, okay. And so this is for sine of x when I'm centering my approximation at a is equal to zero. OK, 
can't quite tell if it's better or not. Maybe it's okay. Well, that's better. That fixed it. <laughs> All right. So the first thing is that we state x, a, and n. So x is where I'm trying to evaluate my approximation. So I notice my function is sine of x. And I'm trying to estimate sine of 0 0.1, so x is going to be 0 0.1. a is given to me as 0, and n is the degree of the polynomial, which is 3 here. The next thing that I want to do is to state the interval. And so here a is smaller than x, so my interval will go from 0 to 0 0.1. The next step is to find the n plus one-th derivative of sine. And I want to state whether my derivative is decreasing or increasing. And I want to find m, the actual value, or the actual bound on my n plus one-th derivative. So the fourth derivative of sine is when my cycle comes back around, and so the fourth derivative of sine is sine. And this is super helpful because now I know my interval, I'm going from 0 to 0 0.1, and on that interval my sine is increasing. So I can say that my fourth derivative of sine, which is sine, is going to be less than or equal to sine of 0 0.1, but I also know that sine, or cosine for that matter, is bounded by, uh, by plus or minus 1. So I can also say that this is going to be less than or equal to, thinking about the fourth derivative, um, than 1. Right, so here m is 1. And the reason why I chose that is a couple of reasons. First of all, 1 is much nicer to deal with than sine of 0 0.1. The other reason is we're trying to estimate the error in the approximation for sine of 0 0.1. So I don't know exactly what sine of 0 0.1 is. Um, so it's a little kind of circular, but... <laughs> It kind of makes sense, right? And the last step that we want to do is to state the error. So here my error is going to be less than or equal to capital M, the bound on my n plus 1th derivative, times the absolute value of the difference between the point of evaluation and the center to the n plus 1 power over n plus 1 factorial. Right, so I know each of these variables, m is 1, x is going to be 0 0.1, and a is 0, all to the n plus 1 power, and n is going to be 3, so the power is 4, all over 4 factorial. And so once I simplify this a little bit, I have 0 0.1 to the 4th power, and then I have 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which is 24, I believe. So this is the maximum error in my approximation. And what kind of statement can I make now? I know that sine of 0 0.1 is approximated by the third Taylor polynomial. So I plug in 0 0.1 into my third Taylor polynomial and I get 0 0.1 minus 0 0.1 quantity cubed over 6. And this is the actual value of the approximation and how do I know if it's close to my actual value. I look at the error so I know that the uh, number is going to be within 0 0.1 to the fourth power over 24 of the actual value. We just have to remember that we're dealing with absolute error, so we're not talking about percentages. And I can plug these into my calculator and figure out the values if I want to do that, which I'm a little bit lazy right now. So with the alternating series, um, one other thing that we did is sometimes we were given an error and we wanted to uh, find how many terms we needed 
in the approximation to have that error. So let's ask the, the same question for, for this problem. What if I wanted to approximate sine of 0 0.1, so same, so same value, to within one thousandth using an nth degree Taylor polynomial? So this is a, a reasonable question, right? Sometimes I want to force the error to be a certain number and I need to know how many terms in my approximation I need to have. So then the error, going back to my inequality, is going to be bounded by the absolute value of the n plus one -th derivative evaluated at some constant c that is between a and x multiplied by x minus a to the n plus one -th power all over n plus one factorial. And because the derivative could be negative, I'm just going to put absolute values on the whole thing to kind of bound it a little bit. So now, what do I know from my problem statement? I know that my x is going to be 0 0.1 still, my a is still 0, so I know this difference, but that's about it. Um, so, I mean, I can make a statement that the derivative, since it's only sines and cosines, it won't be larger than 1, but, you know, if I want it to be more precise, I can leave it as that. It could be less than 1 as well. And so then the difference is going to be 0 0.1 to the n plus 1 power all over n plus 1 factorial. And now I'm forcing this to be less than 10 to the negative 3. Right, so the issue that I'm running into here is I need to manipulate this power somehow and this factorial such that it's less than 1,000. And that is incredibly hard to do. So it's incredibly hard to solve for n algebraically. But what can I do? I can do guess and check. So I do have a couple of options. And because n plus 1 decays um, as a factorial decays really quickly, hopefully I won't have that many terms. Okay, so I want to do another quick problem and then I think we will be good to go. This one, I forgot to write it out, so I'll take the time. What is the error generated by a third degree Taylor polynomial for the function natural log of 1 plus x. So now we have an interesting function centered at a is equal to 0 that is used to evaluate natural log of 2. So the first thing that I notice here is that my function is natural log of 1 plus x, and here I have natural log of 2 that I'm trying to approximate, meaning that my x is going to be 1, right? So when I go back and I plug in x for 1 for x, I have natural log of 2. So that's the first thing that I'm going to do. I'm trying to state x, a, and n, and x will be 1. a is the center of approximation zero because that's what we did last last um, video I'm not coming up with um, anything anything else um, no other Taylor polynomials and I need a Taylor uh, polynomial degree which will be three right so let's recall also the approximation and we recall that the third Taylor polynomial for natural log of 1 plus x that's centered at a is equal to 0 is x minus 1 half x squared plus 1 third x cubed. So we are good to go on that. 
Next, let's state the interval. And so here my x is larger than a, so my interval will go from a to x or 0 to 1. That's pretty nifty as well. Okay. Next, I want to state the n plus 1th derivative of natural log of 1 plus x. And I want to state whether it's increasing or decreasing, and then I want to find the bound on the derivative. Decreasing, okay. And since n is equal to 3, I'm looking at the fourth derivative of this, and um, I just looked that one up, or like I worked it out, so I have negative 6 over x plus 1 to the fourth power on the interval 0 to 1. So I notice that my derivative here is decreasing, which means it's going to be the largest at the left endpoint when x is equal to 0, right? And it's fine because I have inclusive bounds. And so I'm going to choose m to be 6 because that is what happens when I plug in 0 for x and I'm taking the absolute value, right? So m has to be a positive integer or a positive number. So my upper, my upper bound on the n plus 1 derivative is 6. And finally, I just have to state the error. So my error will be less than or equal to m times x minus a to the n plus 1 power over n plus 1 factorial. So let's plug in some numbers and see what we got. m is going to be 6, x is 1, a is 0, and n is 3, so I have a fourth power and then a, a fourth factorial. And so I can simplify this and I have 6 over 4 factorial, which is 24. And so this simplifies to 1 over 4, right? So this is the max error that I can have in my estimation of the natural log of 2 when I'm using a third degree Taylor polynomial. So that is all I have for you, and there is a, an, another example video if you want to watch it on Canvas, but with that in mind, I think we can get started on the activity, and I'll see you.